30 years. He's the author of several books. Uh, I know him best as, as, the, as being the head of the National Whistleblower Center, and I am proud to call him my friend. He's won some of the largest uh, whistleblower amounts paid to a single whistleblower in the, um, the USB tax whistleblower case. Um, Steve's a great guy. He's been a great host and a great ally. Steve Cohen. Thank you all. Thank you for coming. Today is Whistleblower Appreciation Day, period. Thank you, whistleblowers. Thank you, every single whistleblower I've had the honor to represent since 1984, and thank you to those I haven't. You've changed the world. You've done incredible things. Thank you. That's what today is about. But why today, July 30th? What happened on July 30th to make this National Whistleblower Day? Why did the United States Senate last year unanimously at the urging of Senator Chuck Grassley and Senator Levin, why did they name today National Whistleblower Day? Why? And why is this a day that every whistleblower, every person who supports whistleblowers, every single person who has benefited from what the whistleblowers have done over the years, why is today a day to give thanks and acknowledgement? Why today? Why today to thank the whistleblowers who exposed the corruption in the Nixon administration and many others, defense spending, illegal banking, defense contracting, corruption in the war of Iraq. Why today? Why today? Well, some of you may know the answer, but I'll tell you the story and the origins of Whistleblower Appreciation Day. About 15 years ago, there was a challenge to the constitutionality of the False Claims Act. Today, in the House of Representatives, they are attacking that law once again. It's the single most effective law for whistleblowers ever. And there's a challenge to the constitutionality, and, and the Chamber of Commerce and businesses around the country who hated this law said, it gives too much power to the people. It empowers whistleblowers to step forward, and, and under our constitutional scheme, they don't have that power. The people don't have the power, the government does. And they challenged the law saying that whistleblowers can't be empowered to hold institutions accountable. And we at the Whistleblower Center said, okay, we've got to fight this, and we did research on, a, on an amicus brief, a friend of the court brief, and uh, I was working on that, and what we found was I, I, I said to my law clerks, I said, go out there, there's got to be something out there. Dur and they found during the American Revolution, a bill was passed essentially recognizing the importance of people, the citizens, to stand up to support their government. Okay, and we put that in our brief and what, uh, things went on. The, the law was found constitutional. But I get to think, I said, why, why did the... Continental Founding Fathers passed this law in 1778. What was going on? So we dug deeper, and here's what was found. I'll tell you exactly what happened. It was February 10, 1777, approximately six months after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Ten sailors and marines on a boat in Providence Harbor met secretly signed a petition blowing the whistle on the commander of the U.S. Navy. It, it wasn't Paul Revere and the British they were complaining about. It was the commander of the U.S. Navy. And they accused him of, among other things, mistreating British prisoners. And they wrote their petitions and they selected one of their members to jump ship in the middle of a war and to go to Philadelphia and present that petition to the Founding Fathers. The thought of national security issues. This is the War of Independence. If the Founding Fathers lose this war, they are hung for treason. It's not like you're gonna, your poll numbers are gonna get down 4%. 
or some nonsense with a contract, they were going to die. And some sailors jumped ship and went to expose the head of the Navy, whose brother signed the Declaration of Independence and is the governor of Rhode Island. So they were met. And I have discussed this many times, and I've asked people rhetorically what happened to these whistleblowers. And some of you know the answer, but I'll just jump to it. In every single time I've given this talk, it's either hung, shot, court-martialed, maybe they were lucky to spend their life in prison, because this was during wartime. And that's a reflection of today's culture and today's thinking. But here's what happened. They took in the Marine, they heard his testimony, and they suspended the commander of the Navy. And the commander of the Navy was a little upset, so under the state laws of Rhode Island, he gets indictments on the whistleblowers for criminal libel, captures two of them, and throws them in jail in Rhode Island to face trial. And through the research, and it's all in the Whistleblower's Handbook, which I urge you to read, we dug through and we found the letter written by the whistleblowers while in jail being held on bail back to Congress. Here's what they wrote. I'm just, this is from their actual letter. Your petitioners, not being persons of affluent fortunes, but young men who have spent most of their time in service of their country, finding themselves arrested for doing what they believed and still believe was nothing but their duty. How many times has a whistleblower come to me and said, I was just doing my duty? And that's what they wrote from jail, 1778. Held to bail in a state where they were strangers, without connections. I've never met a whistleblower with connections yet. That can assist in defending themselves against a powerful and artful person with the advantages of his office. And I've never seen a case in which the opposition wasn't powerful, crafty, and well-founded. And then they begged Congress for help. That is the origin of National Whistleblower Day. The, the whistleblowers begging for help. But I don't actually see a beg in here. I see we did our duty. We did our job. What are you going to do. It's very modest. They're not confronting, but they, they recognize something here. So Congress meets on July 30th, 1778. Today, in Philadelphia, not quite there, Congress meets and they vote three things. First, they vote to release all the records of the case. There's no state secret. There's no issue that we'll be embarrassed in time of war. No one is saying that the British will capitalize on the allegations that the, we were mistreating their prisoners and try to use that against us. They vote to release all the papers so those two men in jail can use them to defend themselves. Second, they vote to pay the lawyers to defend the two whistleblowers out of the U.S. Treasury. Now, I've been around a long time, and I've never heard of the government ever paying for a whistleblower lawyer, ever. 235 years, they've never done it again. But on that day, whistleblower day, they recognized that those whistleblowers didn't stand a chance, and they were going to get the best lawyers they could get. So did they spend that money on the bullets and guns they needed at that exact moment as the country was at risk? Everybody knows the dire straits of the federal treasury at that time. They voted that money to pay lawyers for the whistleblowers. 
And then they did the third thing. It's a great day for lawyers. Yeah. They voted <laughs> America's first whistleblower law, and I believe perhaps the first whistleblower law in the history of the world. And this is what it says. And I'm now quoting directly from the resolution from 1778 passed unanimously on July 30th, signed by John Hancock himself. Quote, that it is the duty of all persons in the service of the United States, as well as other inhabitants, to give the earliest information to Congress or any other proper authority of any misconduct, frauds, or misdemeanors committed by any persons in the service of these states that may come to their knowledge. That was their resolution. That's why we celebrate Whistleblower Day. But we celebrate it for another reason also. Not just for what they did. There are times in history where people rise above their petty disputes, their problems, even some of the most gross abuses of their time that they are caught up in, be it slavery, be it whatever prejudices these people had. We know that some of these founding fathers would go out and do bad things or even support bad laws. But there comes a time in history from point to point where people together rise above those issues and point to the future. They rise above and point a vision to the future, a vision of the way government must be run, a vision of democracy as it must be be enforced, of laws, how they must be followed. And that day came on July 30th, 1778, when the founding fathers of this country, country, whatever flaws any of them may have had, rose above and did what this Congress cannot do, what most politicians cannot do, but what we can make them do. And to start is to recognize our history. It starts by recognizing this day for what this day is all about. And we take it from there. I want to thank everyone who hosted this. I want to especially thank the whistleblowers. Because on this day, I take a little time out and just think about everything whistleblowers have done to make this a better country. Thank you very much. <laughs>